Okay, so I made a review of the RoofNest Sparrow XL tent about six to eight months ago when I first started getting on the road with it. And uh, overall at the time, or I loved it. And um, I wanted to make a review uh, after having used it for about six months and um, kind of leave my overall impressions and maybe a couple quibbles that I might have with it. Um, so that's going to be the focus of this video. Um, overall, still very happy with it. Uh, it is an expensive tent and an expensive investment. It cost me $3,300 all in last year in the fall. And um, if I could do it all over again, I might try to see if there's something out there that's gently used that I could have gotten for cheaper. Um, but it was kind of nice being the first person to have slept in this tent and have it right off um, the assembly line. So that was pretty nice. Um, so overall, I have to admit that I've never uh, had any other rooftop tents aside from this, so I don't. This is my only frame of reference. Um, but having said that, I think I'm about a seven to eight out of ten out of overall happiness um, with this tent after about six months of use. Um, the things I like is that um, it's very spacious. My fiance and I have slept up here um, several times, and we fit quite comfortably, um, and that's great. Uh, we did opt for the XL, which I think is about eight inches more width, which I definitely think is worth the money. Um, for the most part, if the wind is under about 10 to 15 miles per hour, it's really quiet. Um, but when it does get over that, it can start to flap around and get a little bit noisy. Um, but overall, it's pretty quiet. Um, and it's um, pretty reliable. Like, I haven't really had a whole lot of issues with it. Um, a couple things that I'll get into later, but um, overall, pretty sturdy. I only lost about a mile or two on my gas mileage um, with the Xterra, which was nice because I didn't want to, the Xterra is not that great for gas mileage anyway, so I didn't want to lose that much. And then all last thing is the wind noise is not that much. If I'm on the highway and I have the windows down, I can hear a slight whistle, but as long as I have my windows up, I don't even hear a thing. So um, overall, like I said, still really happy with it after six months, give or take, of use. Um, but now I'm going to bring you guys inside the tent and maybe go through just a couple of things that I, I would point out um, or things to consider if you're going to think about buying one for yourself and a couple of things that I wish that Roof Nest would maybe consider going forward um, in other models that they might put out. Okay, so even before we get up into the tent, I did want to point out that after a few months, I ended up giving up on the ladder. The ladder hooks into any of these um, hooks on all of the four sides. Um, which was handy, but um, I got tired of um, putting it out and taking it back down and storing it. So um, we ended up just storing the tent up on top in a storage compartment above. Um, and then I just scale the, uh, the side of the car like this, which I mean, that may not work for you, but uh, it's just easier for me overall. All right, so now we're up in the tent and I just wanted to go over a couple of issues that I've had with it so far and a couple of suggestions that I would have on future models. The first quibble um, is that it creaks a lot when you move around, so you can't be 100% quiet if you... As I move around, hopefully you can hear that. Uh, it's not too terrible and I'm used to it, it's no big deal, but um, it may not happen with all roof nests. I think it's partly because I spaced out the crossbars on my roof rack, um, I think a little bit too much. So I think when I'm right in the middle, it's a little bit creaky. Um, so I don't think that would be an issue on other people's roof racks, um, but it is on mine. So it's just something to think about. All right, so then another issue that I've had with it is actually the mattress pad, which was super comfortable at first, and overall it still is very comfortable, but you can see where my rear end usually ends up in the same spot, and after six months of use, I definitely have now started to sink in in the middle. So I'm going to try to find another little small mattress pad that I can put in that exact spot to kind of lift my rear end up a little bit and get me back to 100% level. But overall, the tent is very comfortable to sleep in, but if you are going to be in it that many nights, uh, it's a good chance, especially if you're in the same relative spot, that you will start to see some sag in the mattress. And then one other issue inside 
is I've started to notice a little bit of fraying on some of the materials. So nothing is that bad yet, but after six months, I have started to notice a little bit of wear and tear just from general use. One suggestion I would have is, and I don't even know if this is possible, but <clears throat> as I lay here at night, sometimes on those beautiful clear nights, it would be so nice to freaking be able to see the stars above me. Um, I wish there was some way they could have some kind of removable panel up top. I know that would probably be hard to pull off, but I mean, you can kind of see the stars looking out the side, but it would just be so awesome if I could look straight up and see the stars through a netting um, above me. So probably more of a dream than an actual reality for this tent, but a uh, thought nonetheless. Okay, back outside. And the last thing that I've had an issue with, and this is probably the biggest one, is these clasps um, started to, a couple of them started to malfunction. I could close them, but then they would just pop right back open. And so that's a problem. And uh, I contacted the people at Roof Nest and let them know what was going on. And they let me know, they kind of gave me instructions with a pair of pliers of how I could do a quick fix on it. And that worked perfectly. It was just a little piece of metal that kind of over time gets um, skewed one direction. It needs to get put back in its place. And it was super easy to do. Um, and they were, they could have been any nicer about it. They sent me a couple of replacement clasps, which I haven't even put on yet because after I bent that piece of metal back, they've been working just fine. But um, I would say that it was a little bit disconcerting that they started to malfunction. I think it's an issue of me putting um, a lot of... Uh, uh, or stuff in the tent when I close it I leave a lot of blankets and stuff up there so I do think it has to really push down hard and I think that there's just too much pressure on those clasps and so that was the reason that they malfunctioned uh, before they otherwise would but um, it was an issue for me and so I just it got rectified but I just wanted to put that out there I wanted to mention something really quick about the wind I spoke uh, when I introduced the video about how if it's under 10 or 20 or 10 or 15 miles an hour uh, it doesn't really make much of a difference, but um, when it's over about 15 miles an hour, I do start to hear the tent a lot, whether it's the tent material flapping back and forth, um, or um, I have a decent amount of stuff up on top. I've got the ladder, and I also have some shower bags that every once in a while have a little bit of water in them, and so I do feel like that puts pressure, downward pressure on the tent, and um, when that wind gets over about 15 miles per hour, it does start to creak a little bit every once in a while when the wind really gusts up. So um, it's not a big deal for me. I just make sure that if it is windy, I try to find a place that's kind of blocked um, from the wind and I haven't had too a bad of a time with it, but it is worth pointing out that if you do plan on storing some things above the tent, um, when it does get windy, you might want to start to make sure that you've got a place to stay out of the wind or else it will creak a little bit most likely. Another thing that I would point out on this side is that you can see I have a cord coming out of the car up to the tent and that is actually connected from the solar panels up top on the roof of the tent all the way to the Jackery batteries. I actually have two different Jackery batteries and so um, I wanted to have two solar panels up top and so when I first started the trip I just had one and now I have two and it's, it's a stretch to get them both up there um, but they do fit and so uh, I will show you a picture right now of what the two solar panels look like on top of the tent. And uh, all I did was literally just use heavy duty Velcro and duct tape, uh, which every once in a while starts to fray a little bit, but uh, just as long as I keep an eye on it, um, it hasn't, I haven't had any um, too big of issues with it. So um, I would say that if you do have a tent like this, uh, it is possible to get to fit two different solar panels up there, which has made my life a ton easier when I'm trying to power all my devices. All right, so that pretty much concludes my thoughts on the Roofnest Sparrow XL after having driven it uh, close to 20,000 miles and put it up and taken it down probably closer to 200 times. Um, overall, still very happy with it and. Uh, I would recommend maybe if you were going to try to stretch and get one of these, maybe looking into seeing if you could get something gently used and paying a little bit less for it than I did. Um, I will say after having driven this far across the country that I do see plenty of roof nests out on the road, but I also um, think that iCamper is probably the most prevalent model that I see. Um, and I do remember looking into them before I bought a rooftop tent, 
but um, a couple things. One, it was more expensive by about five or 600 bucks. Two, it folds out slightly, so you do get more space on the inside, but you can't only just take up one space. I love mine because it goes straight up and straight back down and I don't impede on anybody else's ability to park uh, next to me if I'm, in a, if, a, if I'm in a tight space. So I still am happy that I got the Roof Nest Sparrow XL as opposed to an eye camper, but I'm sure that tent is great as well. So I hope this review helped um, and if you have any questions, by all means, please hit me up in the comments and I'll get back to you as quick as I can. Have a great day.